Hi guys, this week I'm going to talk about a question that we get asked quite regularly and when we answer it we get surprised responses and that is our tool of choice when it comes to an editing application and I'm going to talk about that very shortly but I just wanted to say that this video is brought to you by TDIQ, our online learning portal from Tech Data World, where aerospace, defense and space tech data professionals can go and learn in an interactive way, watching videos and how to's on our learning platform. So please do check out the link that we will place below where you can go and learn a little bit more about how TDIQ is supporting organizations like yours around the world. So what's my answer to the question, Mike, what structured editor do you use when you're doing your tutorials or you're doing your presentations there at TDW? And my answer, as I said, often gets a little bit of a surprise response. And that is because we use Adobe FrameMaker. Now, the reason that we get those surprised responses is because FrameMaker has had some interesting press over the years, which is basically marketing noise. And people have subscribed to what's being said about it, whether it's legacy software, it's, you know, flaky software, whatever. It, all of these things are just marketing blurb that has been thrown out into the market by competitive products. And you know, we use FrameMaker for lots of different reasons, all of which I'm going to go through with you right now, because some of it might actually resonate with you. I don't subscribe to this messaging that's out there about, you know, you need to use a more modern editor. You know, FrameMaker has been around forever. You know, it does a great job. And there are a number of reasons why it does a great job. I just want to say that this is not being being sponsored by or endorsed by Adobe in any way. This is TDW doing this. Yes, Adobe support us in lots of different ways, coming to our conference and advertising in our magazine, those kind of things. But this is content that's not being supported by Adobe in any way. They are not sponsoring or endorsing this particular video. This is me just doing it, answering a question that came into us here again this week. So I, as I've said, I don't believe the marketing blurb that's out there, the fear, uncertainty and doubt that gets thrown around by other software tools that rubbish competitive products in the hope that they create enough fear and uncertainty and doubt that you will buy their product. OK, that's essentially what has happened around FrameMaker over the years. But why is it that at TDW we have decided that, you know, on our tutorials to show certain things, we use FrameMaker and um, you know, if we're producing a report or we do, we use FrameMaker because we, you know, it's a tool that we're familiar with and it's a tool that I've grown up with. I'm familiar with all of the structured editors out there and I talk a little bit about alternatives in a minute, but there are lots of great editors out there and you have to choose the one that's right for your organization. And it just so happens that for us, FrameMaker sits really well. And this is why it sits really well. First and foremost, it's affordable. In the structured information market, editors are generally very expensive. And because we subscribe to what is known as the technical communication suite, which is an annual um, subscription basis that you can pay monthly or you can pay annually, and you get all the upgrades, the updates, and all of that around the Adobe technical communication suite, which I'll call TCS going forward, the, around the TCS suite, you get all of those things. But it's bundled with some really excellent additional tools, whether that's Captivate, there's some um, um, Robo Screen Capture, you've got Robo Help, and a couple of other minor tools. And it plays really well with some other software that we use called Adobe Creative Cloud, which is our Photoshop's, Illustrator's, Premiere Pro, After Effects, all of those things, and some that obviously I've missed off that list. But so for a few hundred quid a month, we have licensed of many thousands of dollars worth of software that we can use on multiple machines 
here at TDW. And of course, Marjan uses it. Um, Jamie uses it for his video editing. I use it for creating uh, tutorials. And, you know, there it just all plays really nice together for a really affordable price. And I think, you know, again, we don't have any affiliate links or anything with Adobe. Just go to their website and have a look at their uh, products that are available. But I think for my licensing, Creative Cloud and Techcom Suite is about 60, 70 quid a month. So 800 quid over the year. I get all of the support. I get all of the updates and we have thousands of dollars worth of software. So that works well for us because you know, it, it fits well within our budget because when you've got four people that you buy licenses for, it's an expensive business. And especially if you've got a team of 20, 30 technical authors that you're supporting, you know, then I guess, you know, it gets even more expensive. So that was the, the that's one of the main drivers is the cost. It's affordable for us as a company. And the great thing with Frame is that it has out-of-the-box support for Ditter, S1000D, unstructured, HTML5. You know, you can do this out-of-the-box quite easily. And, you know, yes, the Ditter, the Ditter support is probably far stronger, not probably, is far stronger than the S1000D out-of-the-box support. So if you're using Ditter, you could use that quite well within Adobe FrameMaker. But... The S1000D starter kit that's in there is, okay, it's weak. It's not something you would use for a commercial project, but that's not what it's designed for. It's designed to get you going so you can create some descriptive data modules or procedural data modules, uh, but it's only at a older version of the specification. But it works well for us because it means we don't have to, to show conceptual ideas and thoughts within our learning classes we don't have to go and buy any expensive applications that we don't we don't get involved in the business of creating s1000d data modules for example but what we do do is we tell people how they can go and create data modules on tdiq so therefore we can show them within framemaker with the out of the box support they can go and download a trial of the FrameMaker application off the Adobe website and follow along with our learning. And whilst I'm talking about trials, the biggest thing that frustrates me around a lot of the software in our market is trying to get hold of a trial. It is some ask you to sign non-disclosure agreements, some, you know, it becomes a real pain in the backside. And if I want to try a license of Microsoft Office, I can create an account, I can get a 30-day access plan to their software, and away it goes. You know, and yet it seems that in our market they make it very, very hard for you to get hold of trials. But Adobe, you can go and create, I think it's a 15 or 30 day trial. I can't remember off the top of my head. You can go and get that and you can follow along on our tutorials for you know 30 days. And then you can go onto a licensing plan and go along. And of course, all of this links to online learning resources for how to do things with FrameMaker. Now, of course, we're in a very specific and niche market. So we show how to use FrameMaker in a specific context that pertains to our market. Uh, you won't get that kind of stuff on the Adobe website. But, you know, you can do it for... There's also in Frame now, there's capability to integrate with content management systems, which we've got ours linked to our... Um, SharePoint that we have with Office 365 and Exchange 365. You have project management capability in there as well. So, you know, it's it's really quite functional in the way that it works for us in a collaborative way. And um, but it covers both structured and unstructured, which is kind of, if you like, the the one of the major attractions for us is because, you know, if you're a purely XML and you're purely creating structured content and you don't care about formatted output, and then, yeah, of course, then there, there are other tools available. PTC Editor, you know, the, the guys at WebEx have got a great editor as well. You know, there are, you know, there are alternatives out there. But for us, because a lot of our clients are using structured and unstructured information, it means that we can show them how they can do both within Frame. 
and uh, it works well within an organization that has to manage different types of information. And so, you know, Frame is really strong and that's kind of its power as you have the structured and the unstructured versions of Frame. And it's true WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. And this is becoming more and more in vogue again. It went out of fashion for a very long time in the sort of like 90s and, and 2000s is that, you know, people go remove the the formatting from the content and we'll worry about the, the, the format and the look and feel later on down the line. Now, we this is becoming less important now. This has become less important for a number of different reasons. And we've covered it on TDIQ and we've covered it at our conference, the changing role of the technical information specialist and the the the, the Role is changing because they are now having to do and learn far more things, as well as people that are being asked to produce technical content are not professional technical content creators. So they might be a professional engineer or a training person that's being asked to write something that is to be supporting more of a technical type end user. So that WYSIWYG capability really helps in producing that content for those guys. A huge factor for us is the support that Adobe gives around their products. Now, we are seeing a huge market shift at the moment in terms of larger organizations are actually accepting that they really have to put a lot of effort into customer success. You know, there's lots of organization call it customer success. You know, the the FrameMaker tool and as well as all the other Adobe tools are enablers for us to achieve our ultimate gain. And that is, you know, in our case is online learning and training and, and those kind of things. And when it stops us doing that, it becomes an area of frustration. So therefore, you know, we have to be able to get in touch with the vendor in this case, Adobe, quite quickly. And they have some very good support capability. Now, if you are using Adobe tools, you can go onto their website. You can start and, and initiate a chat almost immediately. And yes, they have different tiers of support. So you might just get almost a message taker at the beginning who can answer very basic questions. But very quickly, it gets escalated and you will have a technical guy contact you within a few hours to help you solve your problem. Now, if I contrast that to some 3D software we've been looking at recently, we can't even find a sales guy who who can talk to us in a sensible way about their product. And therefore, it kind of puts the doubt in our mind that they can actually support the customer going forward. And then we add that to a couple of, uh, if you like, key points, data points that we get from people that we know are using their software. And, you know, you start thinking, well, actually, they're not here to support their product, to support the product and their customer success. It's about box shifting. It's about selling. So we actually went to another product. And, you know, so support is huge for us because we have to be slick and efficient in the way that we do things and we produce things and we get things out the door, as you do. So therefore, the ability for them to support us is, you know, really, really super important. Now, I've also mentioned the, you know, we have Creative Cloud and, you know, FrameMaker and RoboHelp and all of these things all talk really well together. And, you know, I can take, I can create content in Frame. I can repurpose it in RoboHelp. RoboHelp is something that we're putting a lot of um, sort of research into at the moment, because again, it's another tool that's had a lot of bad marketing PR from competitors where you know you can actually deploy solid technical information via RoboHelp to HTML5 that's really engaging and works really well. We've used it on a couple of our tutorials on legacy data conversion, if you've done that course, and we show how we've taken an old paper manual and we ended up delivering an IETP, which was actually produced, if you didn't see it, in RoboHelp and deployed quite nicely out to our web server and apps. So it all talks really nice together. 
And they, you know, they all communicate. So whether it's Illustrator, Photoshop, you know, Lightroom and all of these tools all talk really well together. It's something that Adobe has done really well. They can all communicate and and um, it works well for us and our workflows and how we do things here at TDW. A major plus is the way that it's cloud licensed. Now, if you've watched any of my other tutorials on cloud versus installed and all of those things, we've talked about that um, a, a few times on TDIQ and at the conferences. And I know that we've had lots of feedback on some of you hadn't even considered cloud based licensing. Now, cloud cloud based licensing is all of these machines that I'm surrounded by. They all have a purpose. They're not here just to make me look good is that they they all have adobe software installed but the cloud licensing doesn't allow me to exceed how i use the software so this one behind me has creative cloud installed because it's a mac and creative cloud works really well on that and uh, but this is a pc and it has all of the tech com suite which is one of the major down down um, sides of the TCS suite is that it's only Windows based. Unless you're using Captivate, you can get Captivate for uh, the Mac. But you know, for us that works okay because on my Mac, my my little MacBook Pro, I have a Parallels um, partition which runs Windows, which means when I'm away, I can load up FrameMaker and all of those tools. So no big problem. But that means that I can swap from machine to machine whether I'm in office or out of office, and providing I haven't exceeded my licenses, it will run perfectly well. And I can I can install it on multiple machines. So if this one is a, we use this one for um, lots of the video production because it's a powerful machine, but I might need to move the license off here onto another machine to go and do some training, which is something that we do quite regularly. I might take a machine out of the office to go and do some training. I can move the license off here just by signing out and signing in on the other machine, which works really well for us. Another great pro of Frame is that it's easy to configure and set up and work with. And, you know, we really like the way that you can easily create templates that can then be shared with um, other people on the team that can create quotes and, and do those kind of things quite easily. Whether I'm doing a market report or research report or something can be done really easily in frame. Met header and footers and all those kind of things are all really nice to produce. And the great thing is as well is the strength of frame is if you are producing a monolithic document, CMM or something along those lines, you can do it quite easily in frame without the need to go to an external publishing engine and you know unfortunately with all mainly all other xml based pure xml based editing tools they will require you to have a third party or an, an extension to the product for the publishing of the information because you've got to remember a lot of these tools were born out of the remove the content from the formatting and burst all of this information then we bring it back together in some kind of publishing process that then gets thrown out into an ietp pdf or whatever it might be but with frame we can do all of our start to end of the information quite happily within frame because you've got to remember a lot of the people that we're supporting contrary to popular belief if you're in aerospace and defense and space it doesn't equal automatically that you're producing s1000d or ati spec data okay it doesn't mean that by default and unfortunately there's a lot of messaging out there that says you know if you're in aerospace and defense then you must have and you will use s1000d that's true if you're supporting a couple of major vendors, but it's not a blanket true statement. I support lots of organizations where S1000D and um, ATA data is a component of what they produce. It's not the only thing they produce, and therefore it has to form part of a TD strategy. It's not the TD strategy is what I saw on a blog post earlier today, is that, you know, someone believes that S1000D should be your TD strategy. And that is not true for many organizations, especially if you're supporting various clients 
in various countries needing various types of information to conform to their own standards, their own specifications, their own layouts. FrameMaker allows you to do that quite nicely. It means that you can do the structured stuff and the unstructured stuff, which works well for us. I've kind of alluded to a couple of them, but I've got on here, you know, for balance, are there alternatives? Of course there are alternatives. You know, there are lots of organizations out there that are still using for their monolithic documents, unstructured documents are still using Word and they get by quite happily. That doesn't support the structure as well as we would like for um, for what we produce. And, you know, frame leans itself really well to what it is that, that we need to do, which is show lots of concepts and principles of structured editing. And, you know, I've mentioned, you know, there are things like PTC Editor and, you know, the WebEx Ultra XML tool. And there's a few online editors now, thin client editors, which are purely XML based uh, editors. In the main, in the market today, if you are producing structured information, your your FrameMaker, PTC, Ultra XML, and a couple of thin client-based editors based. Of course, on our structured information course on TDIQ, we mentioned that you need to um, have applications versus software versus plugins versus add-ons. You know, we talk about that because if you're doing S1000D purely uh, for um, your clients and you want to use FrameMaker, you know, you're going to need to buy an application to allow you to have the full capability of S1000D within FrameMaker. But that's true as well of Epic Editor or, you know, um, some other tools that are out there. They are configured specifically to produce structured information. Are there frustrations using Frame? Are there frustrations using any tool? You know, there are things that you would um, like to see done slightly differently. There are things that are more from a um, administrative side for us in terms of, you know, sometimes the licensing server gets confused how many machines have been signed into. So you have to then sign out of all of them to sign back in again to get them to work. It's a minor inconvenience. Um, it doesn't happen that often, but when it does, it can, you know, often happens when you're in the middle of trying to get something done. But, it, you know, it's it's really a few second process. What I would say is that, you know, don't listen to the marketing blurb that's out there from competitive products. Is The, the reality is, is that there's a lot of effort gone into certainly the 2017 version of Adobe FrameMaker. And it works well for us and the way that we have to produce content our side. You know, if we're producing a tutorial for TDIQ, it's so easy for us to fire up FrameMaker and show something in the starter kit for S1000D or the Ditter kit that's installed and show it conceptually. And then we can show it over in RoboHelp. Uh, all of that for 50 quid a month, you know, which is uh, which is pretty decent for us and, and what we have to do. It all comes down to what works well for you and what works well in your workflows and what works well in your processes and what you need to achieve with your technical information production. But that is why we use Adobe FrameMaker on TDIQ and here at TDW. Not being sponsored by Adobe on this, and we certainly don't make any money from any links or affiliation links. That, as if you know TDW, we don't work like that. So, um, but what I would say is, if Frame is something that you're interested in, why not just go and download it? There's a 30 day trial. Go do it and have a look at it, and it might just fit well in your organization and it plays nice with lots of content management systems and all of those kind of things that are out there as well so that's why we use frame i hope you found that useful if you wanted me to expand on any of the stuff the licensing and how it supports the structured and unstructured drop us a line at member services at techdataworld.com be more than happy to answer them for you but i hope you found that's mike's thought of the week because we had it again last week why are you using framemaker there it is. That's why we're using FrameMaker.